This is how you can easily turn your studio paper background into a texture background using Photoshop. And if you already know how to do that, you are going to learn how to add gradient color to your background to make your background less boring and more interesting. So you must learn something for this video, whether you like it or not. And if you want to get the texture background or business for this video, all you have to do is go to the description below of this video, click the download link. And after you finish downloading the texture background, all you have to do is come back, like this video, and also share this video to someone who you think might learn something for this video. <laughs> Let's get started. To change your paper bag up with texture, you must first have the digital texture background. So this is how I get my I either use the AI or I just construct it from Instagram and remove the subjects and just generate similar. That is what I do. All right. So first to first, we're just going to first of all remove our subject from the background so that you can have only our background and you can use any method that works for you. So you can just follow along. This is a step by step tutorial. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing Command J. And also you can do this step after doing your scale retouching and everything. So after duplicating my background layer, I'm going to click on my quick selection tool. After that, I want to click on select subject. But before I click on select subject, I'm going to click on this job right here and make sure my cloud is selected. Now, the reason why I select cloud is so that when making the selection, I can have a more accurate selection. But the only thing is when you're using cloud, make sure you're connected to the internet. And if you're using the card version of Photoshop or the Jack's Oil version of Photoshop, I'm not sure cloud will work for you. But if you want to get a good selection, make sure you use cloud when selecting any subject. So once I select my cloud, I'm going to click on select subject. Right now, you can see the selection is on my subject. What I'm going to do, I'm going to invert the selection to the background. And to invert, I'm going to press your command shift I to invert or I can just right click and click on select inverse right here. I'm just going to invert the selection to the background. What I'm going to do from here, I'm going to press your command J to cut out my subject from the background. So I can name this layer above without the subject background and name this one below subject. Now, you can use any method that works for you to remove a subject from the background, anyone at all, but this is how I do mine. Now, after I name this layer subject, I name the one above background. What I'm going to do with my subject layer selected, which is the one below my background layer, I'm going to hold command and click on this layer thumbnail of my background layer. Once I click on it, it's going to bring back the selection. So basically, instead of coming back to my quick selection, I'll click on select subject again, I can just bring back the selection. So it's easier for me to just hold command or control for using windows and click on this background layer to bring back the selection. Now, once I bring back the selection, I'm going to invert the selection again to the subject. So to do that, I can right click and just click on select inverse or I can press your command shift I to just invert it. After I invert it, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a layer mask to this my subject layer. Now, someone actually asked me why I like to add a layer mask when selecting the subject. Let me just quickly show you why. So for example, if I just add a solid color adjustment layer, let's add white or black. Let's add black. Now let's say for example, we're making the selection. There's a mistake like this, that the selection entered my subject. Since it's a layer mask, what I can do, since I added the layer mask and I did not just cut it out, what I can do, I can pick my normal brush tool, switch to a white brush and just paint this part out like that. So that's why I like adding a layer mask instead of deleting it. So that is the reason why. So I'm just going to cancel this and let us continue. So I hope I did not confuse you. So basically, let me just um, undo and show you where I was. All right. Now I said, after I name this layer background, I name this one subject. What I can do, instead of coming here to make the selection again, I can just select my subject layer, hold command or control, click on the layer thumbnail of my background to bring back the selection. And from here, I'm just going to invert the selection by pressing on comma shift I or control shift I, or you can just right click and click on select inverse to invert. Now, once we invert, I'm going to add a layer mask. After adding that layer mask, I'm going to come to my background layer. I just drag this background layer below my subject layer. Now, if I hide my subject layer and my background layer, which is the main background, you can see we have only the background. Our subject is no longer on this image so if i turn back so if i turn my subject layer on we have our subject if i turn it off our subject is no longer there now that we have our background layer and we successfully remove our subject from the background what we are going to do we are going to drag and drop our digital textures into photoshop right now and just make it look realistic and i'm going to show you how to do that 
I'm going to come to my finder and these are the textual I'm going to be using. So you can see this one right here is a screenshot. I just screenshotted it, then I removed the subject. So this is like a textual background. Like I said earlier, this is how I get my textual background. I can screenshot, I can generate. This one right here is a screenshot. Why? This one right here, I generated it with AI. So you can see. So I'm going to be using this tool, this screenshotted, and this AI. The first time I'm going to drag it to Photoshop is this AI. I want to drag this AI texture background into Photoshop like this. All right. And I'm just going to resize it to fit my image. Now, this one doesn't have to be precise because I'm going to be changing the blend mode. So like this work, I want to show you how to make it look realistic. I'm going to hit OK. Now from here, I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. Now you can play with your blend mode. There's no one blend mode that fits all. Different blend for different color of textures or different background. So just play with it and see what works for you. But since I've already done this before, I know screen works for me. So let me just quickly go over the blend so you can see the effect. So this is dissolve. Obviously, we don't want to do this. This is multiply. This is color bond. This is lighting. This is screen. So once I use screen, you can see once I zoom in, you can see the textures on the background and we still have the shadow. So you just bring back the original shadow and see how that texture to the background. That's why I like using screen. You can also use soft light and overlay. All right. But for this particular one, I'm going to use screen. So that is the first step. Now you can see we're already building it up already. Now the next step, I'm going to come back to my finder, click on this screenshotted texture, drag it to Photoshop, resize it like this. Now this one, I like this one, is because of that line. So you can see this line right here, it just makes it look even more realistic. That's why I like adding these particular textures when I'm manipulating, I want to change my paper backdrop to textures. Now for me, if I zoom in, you can see I miss some part right there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it down a bit to fit. So like this works for me. Now for this particular one, I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to overlay. No, let's try soft light. I want to change it to soft light. Okay, so I think soft light works better for me for this one. Now see the before and the after so basically like i said you can just play with the blend mode and see what works for your image so if i just group the texture layer together you can see the before and after this is the before and the after the before and the after we've turned our paper backdrop to textures now you can choose to stop here if you want to stop here because basically we successfully changed that paper backdrop to textures but let's take it a step further let's play with colors and just add something to the background to make it look more interesting now, if you want to add that color good to your background, this is what you can do. Now, to add the colors, first things first, we're just going to desaturate this screenshot I added, this one right here. We're just going to desaturate it. And to desaturate it, you can either, with this layer selected, press your command D U and just take down the saturation. Or, you can come to your adjustment. If you can't find adjustment right here, just come to your windows, click on adjustments, click on hue and saturation. And just reduce the saturation like this all right now we don't want this to affect the whole image we just want it to affect only this one right here what i'm going to do i'm going to clip it so once i hold option on mac and alternate on windows you're going to see this clipping icon so i'm just going to clip it to this one right here so see the before and the after the before and the after for me i'm just going to introduce the colors i want to use and to do that, I'm going to come to my adjustment, click on my solid color adjustment. So this one is going to be on top of the overlays. So let's just use green for now. Green. All right. Now what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to come to my layer mask and just invert it because I don't want it to be like this. So I'm just going to invert it by pressing on command I to invert. Now once I hide it, I'm just going to reveal it with gradient. So to reveal it, I'm going to select my gradient to right here. Once I select my gradient tool, remember, black is to hide while white is to reveal. If you want to reveal, make sure your foreground color is set to white and also click on this gradient right here. Click on basic and make sure this space is on white like that. Next, you want to do, make sure this gradient right here is selected, which is this first one. So once I select this first one, all I have to do from here is just click, try that color where I want it to be. So maybe like this. Now, obviously, it's not looking real. It's just looking flat and the colors are just too much. Now to blend it with the background, what we are going to do, we are going to change the blend mode of this our solid color. So I come to my blend mode and just play with blend mode and see what works for me. So you can see 
immediately I start changing the blend mode, it's looking even more realistic. So you can basically choose any blend mode that's looking good to you. But what I'll advise, you can either use screen, lighting, overlay, soft light, or you can use color. But for now, I'm just going to be using soft light. Once I select soft light, I'm just going to change the color. If I want to change the color, I can double click here and just play with the hue. So I can basically choose any color I want like this. All right, so let's use this color right here. I'm going to click on OK. Now from here, I'm going to create another gradient map and just drag it to conform it down. So to do that, remember, come to your adjustment, click on solid color, select any color you want. Let's use like yellow. All right. So I'm going to invert this by pressing on command I to invert, to hide that effect. Once I hide it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to my gradient tool and just drag it like so. All right. Now from here, come to your blend mode. And just play with the blend mode and see what works for you now let's try soft light as well i think soft light also works so soft light works i'm going to click on ok now see the before and the after the before and the after it's looking a whole lot better right now and if you don't like this color combination what you can do you can just double click remember and just play with the hue okay also come here play with the hue and see what works for you so any color combination you want so basically i think that first one actually works on me the before and the after for me what you can do if you want to make the effect more intense all you have to do is select these two layers the two gradient layer and just press on command j to duplicate it and the effect is going to be intense what you can do from here you can even change the blend mode of this particular one so just play with the blend mode and see what works for you like i said you can use any blend mode that actually work so you will think it's going to give you a more better result so there is no perfect blend mode so let's try that in color i think i like it so no it's not showing anything let's just try color let's use color itself all right so the before and the after i like it so i want to come to this other one change from soft light to color i think i like it wow let me just go this one so you can see the effect so see the before and the after the before and the after a whole lot better so basically what I did, this first one, the blend mode was on soft light. While the one I duplicated, I changed the blend mode to colors. Now if you feel it's too much, you can just come to this group and just take down the opacity like so. All right, so like this works. Now for me, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add like a snort effect to the background. So I'm going to come to my brush tool. Once I come to my brush tool, first of all, I'll create a new layer like this. Once I create a new layer, I'm going to come to my brush tool, click here. And click on Tillens Snow Brush right here and just select this flower. I think extra. Then I'm going to increase my brush size. Make sure my flower color is set to white. Increase my brush size. I just paint this note effect like this. From here, change the blend where it's note effect from normal to overlay like this. Also, come back, come to my filter, just blur it a little bit to make it look even more realistic. So I think like this works for me i'm gonna hit okay and by the way if you want to get my snoot effect i have i think about 25 snoot effects that you can use to make your image stand out so this is one this is another one this is another one this is another one so there are a lot of snoot effects you can use and if you want to get this snoot effect i'll be leaving the link where you can buy it in the description of this video trust me it's going to make your studio portrait looks a whole lot better all right so that is it now back to our video let me just show you everything we've done so far so you can see now see the before and the after the before and the after so basically that's how you can turn your studio paper background into a texture background inside of photoshop all you have to do is make sure you have the digital texture you want to use bring it to photoshop change the blend mode play with the blend mode there's no right blend mode just try and see what works for your image after that, if you want to introduce colors, come to your solid color, change the blend mode to maybe soft light, play with it and see what works for you as well. And just use your gradient tool to add that gradient. So that is it. Make sure to share this video with someone who you think this video might help and also stay creative.